Hey guys, happy Monday. How are you? Cheers. One of my other favorite coffee mugs. Kind of going the whole, now that I do the um, coffee with my um, cinnamon and coconut oil in it, which mind you, I went to Trader Joe's yesterday to get the um, pumpkin spice that everybody says is amazing. And second time I've been there and they've been all out of it. Unacceptable. But anyway, now that I'm drinking my coffee this way, I really don't know why. Um, but I'm using more of my favorite mugs that I've gotten when I travel. And these are the ones I got, obviously, in Park City, which is one of my favorite places in the entire country. As you know, Miami, Park City, and uh, Lake Tahoe are my favorites. And then Seattle. But the funny thing about Seattle is, of course, people that live there will tell you it does rain a lot. Every time I've been to Seattle, it has not rained. So it must be that I just bring the happiness and it doesn't rain when I'm there. <laughs> um, anyway, you might notice I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt because it is, I actually have my heat on. Um, I went from 50 or 40 degree weather when I left last week on Tuesday to Vegas where it was 85 and then it went to like 70 the next day and then it was back up to 80 by the time I left. Um, but anyway, long sleeve. I really like this. Um, I was very, very excited to get my um, new package from Reebok when I came back. So this is one of their, because I've been, of course, I am going to be working out more in the gym for a couple of reasons. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but when I am outside, you know, I can't just <laughs> as hormonally unbalanced as I am and hot all the time, I still need to have long sleeves. So I was really excited to get this top from Reebok. So you can zip it up and it's cute because it has this little hidden zipper thing up here. Maybe so you don't choke yourself or scratch yourself on it. See? See how it like covers up the zippy thing? Um, and then of course you can, of course now I'm going to get it. <laughs> you can unzip it to wear like that. And this is for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which of course, as you know, in my life is hitting close to me. Um, particularly because my mother was just diagnosed with uh, breast cancer um, about a month after my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So it was like um, a serious one-two punch in my family the past couple of weeks. Um, but anyway, we are um, proceeding. They're both in really good spirits. We know what you know what each one of them is going to be doing as far as whether it's a surgical procedure or surgical procedure plus treatment, whatever. But, you know, either way, I sincerely would appreciate you um, praying for them because they're the most awesome parents ever. Um, but anyway, this is breast cancer awareness on my breast. <laughs> and I do really love this top. It also has the keyholes, as you can see. And um, really comfortable top. You can't see it, but it does come down low. So it's not one of those annoying tops that doesn't like come down and, you know, it comes down like right into the middle of my buttock area. So all good. Um, the other thing I got, <laughs> and I have to say, I was probably more nerdily excited about this than some of the other stuff I've gotten from Reebok um, because I was just tweeting about this yesterday. I know I put it on Facebook. So these are um, black, really soft sweats with this on the inside. So they're black and pink, which I love. Really soft, so these are sweats. These are not workout pants. These are sweats and they're so cute. I'm just telling you. It was so funny because I <laughs> I was saying how nice it is to have fall weather and you know it's really chilly outside and you're inside in your sweats and your cozy robe and your Uggs and yeah. That's what I really, that's a, that's a nerd pleasure for me. So I was wearing my sweats yesterday and I tweeted that I hadn't even opened this box yet to see that this had some um, sweats in it. So it's really soft, plain black, but I was very, very excited because actually I have to tell you, I was looking at my Victoria's Secret catalog and they had sweats and I've always gotten my sweats that I want to just wear um, for casual, whatever, around the house. For Victoria's Secret, but there's something to be said about, you know, there's so much crap on the outside of that with, you know, the pink thing, and I think it's cute and whatever, but I kind of look stupid when I have logos on my ass and I'm 43 years old, you know, and I love their style, but I've always found myself looking at people. I just want some plain, really nice, 
sweats that don't make me look like I'm trying to be Britney Spears. So um, I had just seen that in my Victoria's Secret catalog. I'm like, cute, oh, why does it have gold glitter on the side? Um, so anyway, as you can see, and I love the inside of this. Very cool. Uh, and then lastly, I was patiently waiting for this. You might think that I'm, well, I am clearly nerdy about so much. Um, when we were up in Boston, all of the guys that were teaching the CrossFit class from Reebok were wearing these really cool shirts that say on the back, get after it, which is so awesome. And I kept, I, I kept asking about these shirts, like, when are you going to make these available to the public? Because back then they were not available to the public. But they are now. So, and it's very, I have to tell you, it's really, really soft. I never paid attention to t-shirt material until I met with um, some of the guys down in Atlanta at Titan Group, T-I-T-I-N-G-R-O-U-P. You should check them out. Very, very awesome stuff. But they're, primarily what they focus on are um, these weighted vests with gel inserts, which can not only help you through training because you're wearing a weighted vest, um, but also you can heat up the gel or cool down the gel for, you know, while you're training. You can either cool down the gel so that afterwards you're, you know, you work out and then you have it for cut recovery, or you can say heat up the, um, heat up the gel so that while you're working out, say you're going outside, it's warmer. There's all kinds of things you can, you can do with that, but it's gel technology that's inserted into the sleeves. Um, and I'm telling you so much heavier feeling than you would think. The, the vests weigh eight pounds, if I'm correct. I think I'm getting one, and I will showcase it to you, but most people go, eight pounds, but then nah. Well, wait till you try it, no pun intended. Wait, get it, wait. Um, and they have it placed strategically throughout so that it's evenly distributed. So you're not gonna have as much weight here on your forearms as you would up here. And it's kind of to match your muscle. Um, but I was holding up this shirt that he showed me and I was like, that's heavy. And he's like, yeah, a lot of guys think, you know, eight pounds of weight, that's not enough, I'm gonna need heavier. But trust me, a little goes a long way. It's kind of like, maybe in a different scenario, but quite often, like when I would look at Valerie Waters' workouts, right, her, her circuits, and she would say in there, you know, use a five pounder, an eight pounder, and I'm like, come on! And you think it's, it's not gonna be tough enough. It, it all depends it, upon the context of what how you're how you're training so eight pounds might not sound like a lot to you if when you're doing your bicep curls you regularly regularly use 15 or 20s but you try using eight pounds when you're doing you know 20 reps and then stop for five seconds and then another 20 and then another 20 believe me those eight pounds are going to feel like 200 so don't don't knock, what was the word, I'm, don't knock until you try it. That's what I meant to say. Um, so anyway, cool clothes um, also. So I'm at eight minutes already. Um, Vegas was a good trip. Um, I did my workouts. Very pleased with um, how I ate, how I stayed active. In fact, um, Saturday was my flight. What was my flight time? It was at three, so I had to be at the airport at one. And um, I went out that morning and I went for about a three mile run in total. But what I did is I ran about a mile and a half and then I was at this area on the strip that they had stairs. So I, was st I stopped my recorder. I was using the um, Run For Good app. Let's see if I can bring it up from Saucony. Um, this one. So I was using that to track my run. But the cool thing is, is you, could, you can stop it pause it without finishing, right? So I paused it and then I was doing up and down the stairs, two different sets of stairs. So there was one that was, you know, more steep. I took a picture of it, I'll put it up on my blog post. Um, but there was one that was pretty steep and then one that was a little less. But basically what I did is I went up and down the stairs one step at a time, three times. And then I went up and down the stairs two steps at a time, three times. And then I went up and down the stairs three steps at a time, two times or three times, I can't remember. And then I came back down. So I, I went one stair at a time, two stair at a time, three stairs at a time, then two stairs at a time, then one stair at a time, and then I passed out. <laughs> and then I kept um, going back towards the other way, and then I did 100 walking lunges, which gets a lot of fun stairs in Vegas at, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning. And most people are, like, just stumbling out of their hotels going, what in the hell is she doing? It did make me feel like a badass, though, because I'm like, you're going to get your hangover food, and I'm like, 
Um, so then I ran, uh, ran slash walk the rest of the way home. So it was a really good workout. Um, I felt really good. Uh, it was a good week, busy week. I, I sometimes I don't realize though how much travel just depletes me as far as energy. Um, cause I got home by the time I got home Saturday, I think I got home at like 10 o'clock, maybe 930. And I was just so tired. And yet I was not, you know, I think by that time my body had adjusted to Vegas time. So it was, it was only thinking it was like seven or eight. And I'm like, I'm not ready to go to bed yet. And of course, when I get home, I have to unpack everything, put everything away, start my wash. I can never just come in and set my, I wish I was less high strung about it, but that's just not going to change. So I had to come in, put all my stuff away, go through all of my uh, mail, you know, see, see where everything was, put everything away in my office. And, um, then I sat down to watch TV. So by the time I went to bed, I think it was one o'clock and I said, I'm not setting my alarm. I'm not doing anything. I actually took Advil PM because they're still not selling Excedrin PM and melatonin is just not going to cut it when I'm not wired. And I might have had coffee late at night, just saying. Um, so I slept in until 10 in the morning. I think it was actually 10.30 in the morning on Sunday. What does that tell you? That means I was exhausted. Um, I did do a really good job yesterday of not working and just taking time for myself, which is still hard for me to do. You know, it's still hard for me, but I'm realizing more and more. The more that I do that, the more that I don't just cut it off and give myself a break, there, that's what happens is I never stop thinking about work. I never give myself a break. And the, the more that I can just calm down, that's the biggest thing that I have to keep telling myself right now is like, calm down, you'll get it done. It's still going to be there. You can have your coffee and say your prayers and, and have quiet time in the morning and not feel like you have to rush into your office. That's what I've been doing. I mean, really since the company started to, to varying degrees and it's what's kept me so frazzled all the time is I just don't make time for myself. I don't say no to anybody. Um, if somebody wants to talk to me, I'm always like, oh, how can I squeeze them in? Sometimes I have to say no. Um, I'm, I'm less effective that way. Um, I mean, there was something we were working on a project. Uh, it was actually a, a pretty extensive proposal on I think Thursday or something. It took me four hours to edit it, re-edit it, change the numbers, change that again. Very con Sometimes you wouldn't think that something would take that long, but it's like, yeah. Um, and then after I did that, I had another one that was due. By the time I finished that, it was seven o'clock. I had to leave at 7.30, or did I have to be at dinner at 7.30? Dinner was at 7.30, so I probably finished around 6.30, 6.45. And I look up and I call Danielle and I'm like, I have literally been at my desk in my hotel the entire day until I went in and washed my hair and left for dinner. And then I didn't get home from dinner until about probably 10.30 that night. So all that to say, the number one thing that I keep telling myself is, and, and we all have to say this, you guys, I'm, I'm sharing this with you because for some reason you enjoy hearing me babble about things. Um, but a lot of you are dealing with the same thing. How do I find time to, to work out? How do I find time for this? You're stressed out about work, whatever. Um, so much of, of our stress and our anxiety, we bring on ourselves because we are thinking about things, we're anticipating things that never happen. I do it all the time. If I get an email from a client, <laughs> I don't know about you, have you ever had somebody who says, emails you or writes you a note, or I remember my first boss out of college used to leave a yellow sticky on my desk that says, um, I don't think she said we need to talk, but it was like, we'd love to talk to you at three o'clock. And that was it. And immediately I was like, what did I do? What did I do? I'm immediately thinking I've done something wrong, immediately thinking that I'm in trouble. When usually it would be half the time, now that I look back in retrospect, it was usually a promotion or you're doing a really great job. I want to do this. I want to give you five cents more an hour. Yeah. But again, all that to say, the more that you can, it's helping me tremendously recognize fear, doubt, anxiety, all of that, the more that you open yourself up and going, and you, you recognize that this is what you do and how it has um, affected you in the past, how it hasn't really solved any problems. In other words, I wrote this on my blog yesterday. I was like, you know, when I was at my last job, is that a shadow? Yes, it's a shadow. Looked like I had a big black mark there. Um, 
when I was at my last job, you know, I, I really didn't like my job. I didn't like the people that I worked with. I didn't fit in. And every time I had to go fly into DC, I just dreaded it. I absolutely dreaded it. I would make this up in my mind and be like, oh my God, you know, how can I, like, I wanted to be sick. I wanted to not have to go because I didn't want to hang around with all of these people. I didn't want to, you know, try to give people ideas and get knocked down again. I didn't want to deal with the politics. I didn't want to deal with, you know, getting yelled at for this or that or the other. And most of the stuff I was like in my head thinking, I'm going to get yelled at for this. I'm going to get talked to for this. I'm going to get fired. Every single time I went to DC for my job, I anticipated that the absolute worst was going to happen. And there finally came a point where I was like, I realized that every single time I was going there, you know, I talked to my mom, I talked to my friends, I talked to my colleagues and I'm like, I finally realized I do this every time I go there. And whenever I leave and come home, I'm always saying to somebody, to, to those friends or colleagues or whatever, family members, it really wasn't that bad. It was okay. It was fine. It wasn't that bad. So whose fault is it that I'm getting stressed out and full of anxiety and stomach aches? It's mine. So the more that you can relax and chill out and realize that whatever is handed to you in in relationships in business in your workout whatever not in your workout um you'll handle it like i, I remember danielle was was saying there's there was uh somebody she was reading and, and they just their big thing was you've got this and i know i put that on one of my blog posts recently but that's something that i have to keep telling myself like what's the worst possible thing that could happen and you've got to keep thinking of that to be honest with you guys, I think that I've, shit, I'm at 16 minutes already. I have to stop talking. But if you can adopt that, like that mental thing to say to yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? And you realize that usually the worst thing, even if it's the worst, worst, worst thing ever, you can deal with it. You know, in the worst thing is you're going to get run over by a truck and die. I mean, that could happen to you any day. It's not, um, uh, contingent or, or um, that's not going to be, you know, based on something that has to do with your work or whatever. Uh, you can deal with anything. If, if you think about like, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? When I, when I quit my job, I had to think about what, what is the worst case scenario here? Worst case scenario is fifth lunch will makes no money. I've done this. Um, I'll be embarrassed because I've tried something and it didn't work, but I would just, what would you do? Kelly, what would you do if the worst thing happened? I'd get a job. Is that the end of the world? No. So get over it, adopt that worst, you know, what's the worst case scenario? And the more that you start to realize that the worst case scenario is not that big of a deal, it's gonna change everything. <sighs> and now I didn't get to tell you everything I wanted to tell you, but I'll shoot my next vlog and we'll discuss it then. See you tomorrow, have a good day.